Hey family, my name is Richard. And I'm Brittany. And we are the founders of lovealwaysministries.com. And we want to say thank you so much for tuning into this channel. And if you guys could, could you make sure to subscribe to this channel so you can stay updated with everything that's going on right here on this channel. And if you'd like to partner with our ministry, you can do so by heading over to lovealwaysministries.com slash donate to make a donation today. Um, or you can give by snail mail. Just look for the website at the bottom of every page on our website. Um, and if you haven't checked out our book, A Call to Purity, what are you waiting for? It is available on Amazon or on our website. Make sure that you pick yourself up a copy today. It is changing lives all over the world. We love you guys. We can't do what we do without you. So thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And thank you for tuning into our channel. We love you guys so much. And we pray God's blessings over you. What's up, family? My name is Richard Delamora. And thank you so much for tuning in right here on our YouTube channel at lovealwaysministries.com. I really appreciate you. And I pray that Today, as I minister to you a message called Stop Being Hard on Yourselves, I pray that it would uh, minister to you powerfully and effectively. And if you guys could, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel. And also, if there's something that resonates you with this message, drop a comment, press the like button. We want to make sure we share this word and we would love to hear your feedback. Well, friends, today let's dive into the message called Stop Being Hard on Yourselves. And if you have the uh, Bible, I'll be reading out of the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 and I'll also be reading out of Romans chapter 3 verse 23 in the NLT. So if you got your Bible or if you want to just view on the screen, I'm going to be reading out Philippians 4 8 and it reads like this. And now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Romans 3.23 For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standards. Let's pray real quick. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And God, I thank you for today. I thank you, God, for this Love Always community. And I pray, Lord, that this message would bless them immensely, Lord. And I pray, God, that your fresh anointing would be on this message, God. Holy Spirit, speak to us and do a work within us. God, we thank you today for your love and your grace. And we ask this, God, in your name. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Stop being hard on yourself is the message. Well, friends, one thing that I always do every morning, I'm always asking God this one thing. God, if there's anyone that you want me to minister to, could you please send them my way or could you give me a word of encouragement? And I'll never forget this one time when I said that prayer, uh, one of my friends came to my mind and I felt like the, the Lord gave me a word for them. So I was super excited to give them this word. So I got my phone and I dialed their number and I was like, all right, let's give them a call. So as I'm waiting and hearing the phone ring and ring and ring, I'm like, all right, I can't wait till they pick up because you know what? I'm a minister to them. This is going to be a good word for them. And anyways, it's ringing and ringing and ringing. And then all of a sudden, it goes to the voicemail and I'm like, no, but then I'm like, no worries. I'm still going to give them a word. They're going to have the best voicemail in their life. This is going to encourage them. So they're going through the process. Hey, this is so-and-so. I'm sorry. I can't pick up my phone right now. If you could leave me a message. I'm like, okay, here it is. So I'm about to do it. And then randomly a female voice jumps on their voicemail. And this lady says, I'm sorry. The voicemail box is full and this person can no longer receive messages. Goodbye. And I'm like, wait, what? Are you kidding me? Bro, you couldn't delete a voicemail or two? I'm like, no way. Anyways, I got so bothered because I had such a good word to share to this person. And what ministered to me in that moment was this, was that I couldn't send a new message to my friend because all his old messages took up all the space. And since all those old messages took up all the space, there was no space for me to be able to send a new message 
to my friend. And my friend just lucked out on a good word, but eventually I gave him to him later. But friends, this has me thinking here today. How many of us today are hard on ourselves because we've been holding on to the wrong things? You see, we're holding on to our mistakes, we're holding on to our failures, we're holding on to our regret, and we are listening to the recordings of our failures. And these recordings aren't helping us, they are actually hindering us because they keep reminding us of what we could have done better. Uh, I could have done better by not being angry at my partner and cussing them out. I could have done better by being a better parent to my child. I could have done better by preparing more or I could have done better by not giving in to temptation. You see friends, I understand in life that there's gonna be a lot of times where we could have done something better or where we wish we can get back these what if moments. You know those what if moments where, man, what if I would have done it this way or what if I would have said it this way? I get it, my friends. There's gonna be a lot of those moments where we wish we could have taken those moments back. But could I encourage you here today? Instead of focusing on what you could have done better or the what ifs, why don't you focus in today on what is? And what is, my friend, is that the Bible teaches us that God's mercies are new every day. What is, my friend, is that the Bible teaches us that when we repent, we are forgiven. And the scripture teaches us in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that we all fall short of God's glory, that we all have sinned and made mistakes. You see, the reason why I'm encouraging you here today to focus in on the what is in life is because you can't live in your past and have rest in your present. And some of you here today, you are restless because you are holding on to the wrong things. And not only are you holding on to the wrong things, you're repeating it and reiterating it every single part of your day. And this is why you're restless and you feel condemned and you have no peace, no energy, and no life, no enthusiasm for you to move forward because the wrong things are playing in your head. That's why I love what the Bible teaches us of us in Philippians 4.8. It's the Apostle Paul speaking and he says to do what? He says to fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. He says this, think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. My question for you here today is, is what are you thinking about? All day, are you thinking about your mistakes? Are you thinking about, man, I blew it again? Are you thinking about your shortcomings? Or are you doing what the Apostle Paul is teaching us to do? And that is thinking about things that are excellent, excellent, thinking about things that are true, thinking about things that are praiseworthy. You see, what you have to understand is this, friends, is that the reason why we are losing our peace is because we are losing our praise. And I want to encourage you here today, some of you you, you need to get your praise back because you need to get your peace back. It has been far too long where you allowed guilt, shame, and condemnation get the best of you. Friends, condemnation is not your portion. Forgiveness is. And I want to tell you here today that we have all fallen short and we have all made a mistake. But the Bible also encourages us in the book of Proverbs that a righteous person may fall down seven times, but they go and get back up up again. And I want to tell you here today that instead of being hard on yourself, get back up again. Yes, you may have made a mistake, but you're not a mistake. Yes, you may have fallen short, but that doesn't mean you're a failure. God has new things in store for you. And I'm telling you here today that God wants to finish what he has started. But I'm telling you, man of God, I'm telling you, woman of God, it's time for you to get out of your head and get your praise back so you get your peace back and your joy back because God wants to do wonderful things in and through your life. So I want to encourage you today and help you today to stop allowing you to be hard on yourself. And the way that we do it is by three things. So I want you to write this down, okay? Three things we need to stop doing so we don't beat ourselves up. And the first thing is this. If you're taking notes, write this down. Stop allowing the enemy to condemn you. 
Stop allowing the enemy to condemn you. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. I'll be reading out of the NLT. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Isn't that some good news? You see, friends, if we are going to stop being hard on ourselves, then we have to know the difference between condemnation and conviction because those words are two totally different words. You see, the word conviction in the Webster's Dictionary says this. It says that the word conviction means a strong belief or an opinion. And the word the word condemnation means a very strong disapproval. So when God convicts us, it's God giving us an opinion. He's giving us wisdom and awareness in our spirit. But when there is the spirit of condemnation, that is all about guilt, shame, and punishment because the word condemnation means a very strong disapproval. And right here, friends, we have to understand the difference between these two because God does not condemn us, but God does convict us. Let me break it down for you like this. Hear the difference. Condemnation leads you to shame, but conviction leads you to grace. Condemnation draws you away from God, but conviction draws you to God. Condemnation offers guilt, but conviction offers forgiveness. Condemnation leads to self-hatred, but conviction leads to acceptance. Condemnation points out your sin, but conviction points you to Christ. So hear me, when God convicts you, he's convicting you to help you. But when the enemy condemns you, he condemns you because he wants to hinder you and hold you back. And that is the goal of the accuser. That is the goal of the enemy. He wants to condemn you so you never walk in freedom. So you're paralyzed by your sin. So you're paralyzed in your mistakes. So now you no longer work on the things that God is calling you to do. You no longer step in your purpose. All because the enemy is condemning you and trying to get the best of you. I know for me personally in my life, I allow the enemy too many times to condemn me. So you see, I don't know if you're just like me, but when I make a mistake, I'll just sit there and reiterate it and replay it in my mind over and over and over again. And I remember this one day, I felt like I made a mistake and I messed up. And it was in regards to preaching. And I don't know, after I got off, um, got off the stage, I started getting hard on myself. I was like, man, I could have done this better. And... Just like I said earlier, man, it would have been better if I would have done it this way. And man, what if I would have encouraged them this way? And oh, I forgot to say this. And all these thoughts were getting the best of me. Not only that, the crowd was pretty quiet. And I'm like, golly, there was no response. And I don't know, I just felt like the enemy was just messing with me and telling me, oh, look at you messed up. Man, nobody was encouraged today. You didn't do a good job. Like, why are you preaching, Rich? Are you even called to be preaching? And all these thoughts were just getting the best of me. And I'll never forget it. I go outside and this gentleman comes to me and he's like, hey, I have a word for you. And I said, well, what's what's the word? He goes, I I felt like the Lord told me to tell you that uh, the patient is always quiet when they go under surgery. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? He goes, you are doing some heart work today. And you were cutting us and ministering us so much where we were so quiet that it really started to to help us to reflect on areas in our hearts where we need to start tackling and allowing the Holy Spirit to do an inward work within us. And he's like, Richard, I just want to tell you, Don't be discouraged, but be encouraged because you blessed us immensely. And don't ever let uh, uh, the crowd being quiet not think that the Holy Spirit did not do his job. And I was like, the Lord was working in you and through you. You see, I was so grateful I got that message because when I got off the stage, I thought I was doing a horrible job. And that right there was the enemy condemning me, condemning me, and condemning me because that's what the enemy does. uh, uh, Condemnation always breaks you down, but conviction, right, always builds you up. And when I heard that word, I'm like, you know what, Richard? Stop being hard on yourself. You have to learn to reject and ignore the voice of the enemy. Why? Because condemnation is not your portion. Why I'm telling you here today is this. 
is because when you make mistakes, the enemy's going to try to condemn you. But the Bible says, if you are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. So when the enemy tries to tell you that's as far as you're going to go, man, you're a horrible parent. Wow, you did horrible on that project. Man, I don't know. You might get fired because you messed up. You made a mistake. Or, oh, no one's going to love you. Like, look at all the mistakes. Like, look at your past. Why would anybody want to be with you, someone like you? No, instead of listening to those words, instead of hearing those condemning words, those words of strong disapproval, rebuke that, reject that, and understand that God loves you. And isn't it interesting, friends? That whenever we make a mistake, isn't it funny how the enemy always tries to remind you of your past? You know, it's funny because when I think about somebody who made a mistake, I think about somebody like Peter. And I don't know if you guys uh, remember this story or this might be your first time hearing this story. But one day, um, Jesus goes and tells like, Peter, Peter, like one day you're going to deny me. And Peter goes, I'm never going to deny you, Lord. What are you talking about? He goes, Peter, you're going to deny me. God, I am not going to deny you. Peter, you're going to deny me. He goes, no, I'm not, Lord. He goes, okay. Anyways, long story short, one day this servant girl comes to Peter and goes, weren't you with him? Uh, Weren't you with Jesus? He goes, no, I wasn't with him. And she asked him three times, weren't you with him? And Peter goes and denies it and says, no, I wasn't with him. And then the scripture teaches us the rooster crowed. And that was a signal that Jesus told him that when the rooster crows, you will surely deny me. And when he heard the rooster crow, Peter started to wept bitterly because he denied Jesus. Let's stop right there. Imagine the thoughts of shame and guilt going in Peter's mind. I was with Jesus. I was with my Savior every day helping him. Whenever Jesus was doing miracles, it was always Peter, James, and John. One of his favorites, right? And then Peter does what he never wants to do, and that's him making a mistake and denying Christ. So what happens with Peter? Well, the Bible teaches us later on in the book of John that Peter goes back to fishing. Some of you might be like, well, what's the problem with Peter going back to fishing? There is a big problem with Peter going back to fishing because God did not call Peter to go back to fishing for fish. He called Peter to be a fisher of men, and that is to go out and minister and help God's people. But this is what condemnation does. When condemnation gets the best of us, condemnation always leads us back to our past. And some of you here today, that's what condemnation is probably doing with you. Why don't you go back to your old ways? Why don't you go back to your porn habits? Why don't you go back to drinking? Why don't you go back to that old job? Why don't you go back? But I want to tell you here today that when you make a mistake, God does not tell you to go back because condemnation always leads you to your past, but conviction always leads you to a place of grace. And I love what happens in John chapter 21, verse 15 through 17. Jesus finally has this encounter with Peter after he made that mistake. And let's, let's see what Jesus told Peter when he made this mistake. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs. Jesus told them. Jesus repeated the question again. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep. Jesus said a third time, he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Then Jesus said, feed my sheep. Notice when Jesus came back and spoke to Peter, notice that he did not bring up his mistakes. Notice that he didn't bring up what Peter done. Peter, you denied me. Do you remember that? Do you remember that you said that you would never do it? No, 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 no. Jesus did not bring up Peter's mistakes. And in the beginning, the servant girl asked Peter three questions. And that was, were you with him? And he 
denied that he was with Jesus. And now Jesus is giving him another opportunity. And he just asked him the simple question, do you love me? And Peter said, you know I love you. You see, what I love about this text is that when we make a mistake, God always gives us an opportunity. And when we make a mistake, God will always lead us to a place of love. You see, what I love about God's language is God's language is never guilt. God's language is always grace and love. You know, I want to tell you here today, if you are just like Peter and you made a mistake, maybe you have fallen short, I want to tell you here today that there is nothing that you can do or nothing that you can't do that will stop God from loving you because God loves you and he's for you. And if you confess and repent it of your sins, God will restore you and he will forgive you. Friends, when the enemy tries to condemn you, ignore his lies because that is not the Lord. The Bible says that God is a God who will forgive us when we repent of our sins. And friends, if condemnation is trying to knock at your door, remind yourself that condemnation is not your portion, but grace and forgiveness is. Point number two says this. If we are going to stop being hard on ourselves, then we need to stop listening to the voice of the accuser. 2 Corinthians 10.5 reads this. I'm going to read out of the New King James Version. It reads, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You see, friends, one of the greatest battles that we're going to face is in our ear gates because our ears are the entry point to our heart and the enemy knows that. So what is he going to try to do when you make a mistake or when you fall short? He is going to go and try to drop suggestions and thoughts into your head that are not in alignment with God's word. And if we're not careful, we'll allow those words to take root in our hearts if we receive it. You see, what's funny is, is on my iPhone, we have this ability called AirDrop. And I love AirDrop. AirDrop is incredible because instead of text messaging someone, a video or a photo, which takes forever, you can just be by somebody and you can AirDrop a photo or a video and it goes into your phone instantly. I love that. And the way to AirDrop somebody is what you do is you click on a photo, you press AirDrop, and it goes right to their phone if they receive it. But if they don't receive it, they won't receive the photo and they won't receive the video. But what's interesting, family, is this, is that did you know that the Bible says that Satan is called the prince of the air? And could I tell you every day that the prince of the air, Satan, and his demonic forces are going to try to airdrop things into our life if we receive it. He's going to start trying to airdrop words of failure into your heart. He's going to tell you and try to shame you and condemn you and tell you, you know what? You made a mistake. God's not going to use you or you're always going to be single for the rest of your life. And look at you, man, you fell into sexual temptation. You're always going to be stuck here. And if we're not careful, we'll allow the enemy to airdrop things into our spirit, things into our heart, things into our mind if we receive it. That is why it is imperative, friends, that we do what 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, and that is to cast down those arguments and bring them into captivity into Christ. So the moments where the enemy tries to tell you that you're a failure, tries to tell you that you've blown it, tries to tell you that you made too many mistakes. Instead of receiving those words, we have to learn to cast those things, those words down and bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. This is imperative for us to do, friends, because how many of you guys know that if you hold on to these thoughts and you start thinking about these thoughts, these thoughts are eventually going to lead you to a place of action. And what do I mean by that? Is that every thought fuels our action. So if you're consistently hearing words that I'm a failure, I'm a failure, I'm a failure, your actions are going to be, I don't want to step out. I don't want to do this. You know why? Because I am a failure. That is why it is so imperative that we are cognizant of what thoughts are coming into our mind. And I'm telling you, friends, 
If the words that are being seeded into your mind are not biblical, then we need to learn to cast those out. So the question I have for you today is this, is what are you inviting in that God is calling you to cast out? What words are you entertaining that is enslaving you and putting you in bondages? You see, friends, if we're sitting here and listening to the words of the enemy, then the enemy is going to put us in a place of captivity where we're going to stay bound, we're going to stay stuck, and we're not going to be able to walk in freedom. That is why it is imperative to cast these words down, but not only do we need to reject these words, we also have to replace these words with right thinking. And if we're going to have right thinking, then we need to focus in on the right words. You see, what I love what the Bible says in Colossians 3, 2, it says this, set your mind on things above and not on the things on the earth. Let me ask you today, what is your mind set on? Is your mind set on things above? Is your mind set on, on what God says about you? Is your mind set on things that are admirable, lovely, praiseworthy? Where is your mind set on? Or is your mind set on earthly things? Set on things of the world? Is your mind set with the, vo- with the words of the enemy? Where are you setting your mind on? Because I'm telling you here today, wherever you set your mind on, your mind on, it's going to create your mindset. And some of us, our mindsets here today, they're not good because we have been setting our mind on negative things, on earthly things, rather than the things of God. You see, friends, recently too, talking about settings, uh, I was upstairs, my wife and I, we, we just purchased a new home, and I was upstairs and and um, watching our new TV, and, and when I was watching TV, I realized that the TV was rather dark, and I'm like, this is a brand new TV, why is it this dark? And as I'm watching TV, I'm like, no, this cannot be right, this TV is way too dark, and I'm like, you know what? I got, I got, I got to check this. Out. I got to check in the settings. So, I go to the settings and I'm looking like maybe the brightness is down or the contrast or I don't know. Maybe it's on a wrong picture. So, I go to the setting, and then I click on picture format. And then when I go to picture format and I look at brightness, could I tell you that the brightness wasn't at like 20, 30, 40? No, 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 no. The brightness was all the way down at zero. And I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe Brittany did this because she didn't want it too bright. But anyways, my TV setting was on zero. And because the brightness was at the, the lowest uh, number in the settings, I couldn't see anything. But it's so interesting that the moment I went into the settings and I went on the brightness area and I put it up, the TV started to get brighter and brighter and brighter and I could finally see what is on the screen. You know what's interesting though is that the whole time it was on dark because my wife changed the settings. And I'm thinking here today, in your life, is your life feeling dark? Is your life feeling like doom and gloom? Because the settings you have it on right now is on, on is on dark. And this is why you're not seeing the light being permeated in your life. You see, if we want to learn to change the way we see things, if we want to learn to change our actions, then we need to change our settings. And some of us here today, the reason why we are settling is because we need to change our settings. Some of us, our setting has been on autopilot. Our settings has been on the negative. Our settings have been, I'm going to just receive what the enemy tells me. I'm going to be like Eeyore, just sit stuck in my way, in my negative ways. And I'm going to be just sad about life. And man, God, it's just like, you can't, uh, I don't know if I could be used again. Or man, I'm always going to stay stuck here. Friends, instead of staying stuck in those settings, why don't you go and change those settings? How do you change those settings? You do it by setting your mind on things above and you do that by getting in the word of God. You see friends, if we are going to change our mind, then we need to do it by being in the word of God. That is why it's imperative every single day that you get in 
this word so the word can remind you who you are. You see, the Bible teaches us that we are the apple in God's eye. The Bible teaches us that God will never leave us nor forsake us. The Bible teaches us that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 8.31, if God is for us, who dares be against us? The Bible teaches us what God has started, he will finish. What am I doing in my life right now? What am I saying to you? I'm changing my settings because I'm changing the way I speak. And if you want to change the way you speak, then you need to get in God's word because God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword. God's word will bring you light. God's word will convict you and the Holy Spirit will assist you. And I want to tell you here today, friends, today is the day that we need to stop being in bondage. We need to stop being hard on ourselves and we need to remind ourselves that God is good and God is faithful and God loves us. But the only way we can do this is we have to set our mind on the things above and we have to set our mind and heart in God's word. Point number three as we close today, if we're going to stop being hard on ourselves, we have to stop rejecting God's grace and we need to receive it. Stop rejecting God's grace and receive it. 1 John chapter 1, 9 in the New King James Version. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Half of the battle is asking God for forgiveness. Please, God, forgive me. But the second half of this battle is receiving God's forgiveness. And I'm going to be honest with you here today. I had a hard time receiving God's forgiveness. You see, when I made a mistake or when I messed up, I felt like, no, I'm not worthy of your grace, God. I'm not worthy of receiving your forgiveness. And I'll never forget this one time. I was out shopping with my uncle and it was my birthday and I uh, were at Nordstrom's and my uncle, and I, I picked up the shoe and I, I really liked it. And my uncle tells me, Rich, do you want that shoe? And I'm like, no, 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 no. It, it, it's, it's way too expensive. He goes, but do you like it? I'm like, yeah, I love this shoe. It's a wonderful shoe. He goes, I want to buy that for you. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't need to buy it for me. It's just way too expensive. And he's like, Richard, let me bless you. I want to buy that for you. Like, but it's a lot of money. He goes, Richard, you have been doing so much for me. Why can't I bless you? I was like, you, Richard, you need to learn to receive, Rich. As much as you give, you have to learn to receive. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, if you want to, he goes, hey, stop that. Receive it. You deserve it, Rich. And I'm like, well, Richard, receive it. So he ended up buying me these pair of shoes that I absolutely love and it was great, but... Friends, I had a hard time receiving it. And I remember I, at that time I was taking therapy. And I believe all of us should get therapy. It's great. I told my therapist, like, man, I had a hard time receiving it. Uh, this gift that my uncle wanted to give me. And he goes, well, why is that? I'm like, I don't know. I just felt like, I don't know. I just need to work for it. He goes, yeah, Rich, but it's a gift. It's a gift. You don't have to work for it. You just need to receive it. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I just felt like I think everything should be worked for. He goes, Richard. Yeah, there's things in life that you got to work for, but there's also things in life that is a gift that you need to receive. And if somebody wants to bless you, receive it. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right. And as I was working through all this, I realized just in my upbringing, I was always known. Well, my father's always taught me like work for what you want, work, work, work. So I grew up in a house where all we did was work. So when somebody gave me something, I felt bad because I'm like, well, I need to work for that thing. And what, what, what I really needed to be broken off of me was I needed to be, I needed that works mentality to be broken off of me because I had so much of the law in me and not grace in me. You see, grace is a gift that God has given us. And we can't buy grace. We can't buy this gift. No, no, no. This grace is given and we have to learn to receive it. And I want to encourage somebody here today. I believe that one of your greatest battles that you're facing here today is that you can't receive God's grace and you can't receive his forgiveness and just, you probably are just like me. You feel like you have to work for it. And I got to work for his grace because I have to work for his forgiveness because if not, I'm not going to be deserving. Friends, can I just be honest with you? None of us deserve God's grace. 
If anything, we deserve God's wrath and punishment for our sins, but because our Father is a good Father who loves us and who is for us, He gives us this gift of grace, which is the gift of life that helps us to live and walk in freedom. And I want to tell you here today, some of you have resting problems because you have receiving problems. And you cannot receive the grace of God, receive His forgiveness, because you have to feel like you have to work for it. But the Bible teaches us, pick up on this, Ephesians 2.8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. God wants to give you this grace, this gift called grace. And instead of rejecting it, my friends, you have to learn to receive it. And the Bible, I read the scripture earlier in 1 John 1, 9. It says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. You see, when we confess and we tell God, God, I made a mistake. I blew it. I should have not talked to her. I should have not talked to him. Or, man, I just did a horrible job at at um, talking to my wife or my husband. I should have done this better. Like, God, I'm so sorry. You see, when you confess and you repent of your sins, the Bible says that he forgives you. So friends, if God forgives you, why don't you learn to forgive yourself and receive his grace? Well, Richard, I don't know if I could because I ruined the family or I, I ruined it because I did this. I, I ruined it. Hey, Understand, you may have ruined one plan, but God always has another plan. So stop thinking that God cannot restore something because God is the restorer of all restorers. And I want to tell you here today that God loves you and God forgives you. And the Bible says that when we repent, He doesn't even remember our sins. And I want to tell you here today that when you repent, you need to learn to not remember your sins as well. And you need to let that go and tell yourself that there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And if you're here today and this message is ministering to you and maybe you're like, Rich, I've been hard on myself. I've been beating myself up. I've been allowing the words of condemnation get the best of me. I wanna pray for you and I wanna believe that God will help you with that, that, that monkey on your back. And I believe that God will come in and he will help alleviate those problems and that spirit of joy and peace will get back into your life. And if that's you here today and you're battling with that, I want you to receive this prayer. And I believe as you receive this prayer, it's gonna help you. So let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. And God, we thank you for today. And we thank you, God, for your word. And I pray, God, if there's someone here who's watching today who's hard on themselves, God, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would comfort them because you are our comforter, God. And I pray, God, as they repent, Lord, that you would restore and repair them, God. God, I pray in those moments where the enemy tries to remind them of their past, I pray that your grace and your spirit would remind them of their future. And I pray right now that you would give them the strength, Lord, to be able to get up and get out of that, Lord. God, they are not a product of their past, but they are a product of your grace, Lord. And God, I thank you, God, that you're continually doing a new thing. And God, we have, might have messed up a plan, Lord, that you had for us, Lord, but I know, God, that you said in your word, Lord, that whatever you started, you're going to complete it, Lord. So I pray that a completing, finishing spirit would be on their lives, Lord. And God, I just thank you for every man, every woman watching here today. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless their day and you would bless, their, uh, bless back their time for sitting here and watching this video. And we pray this, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Friends and family, I hope you receive this word. And I want to do a second prayer because as I was praying, this word came to my heart. Maybe you're here today and you're watching and you don't know Jesus and you would like to know Jesus. I want you to pray this small, short prayer with me because if you pray this prayer, God will come into your life. And here's the prayer. Say, Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus and I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. I believe and confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior. And I ask this, God, in your name, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray. Amen.
you pray that prayer, we believe that you have gotten saved. Well, friends and family, thank you so much for tuning in. I pray this video has blessed you. And if it does, do you mind sharing this with somebody? And do you mind liking it? And if there was something that ministered to you, could you write it down in the comment section? We would love to be able to read that. Also, if you could follow me on Instagram at Richard Delamora on Facebook as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching and I pray this video message you, uh, blessed you. And remember friends, stop being hard on yourself and receive God's grace and his love.